Hi everyone, it's Evangeline here at E Trailer, and today we'll be taking a look at our Kuat Sherpa bike rack. This is gonna be a pretty cool pairing right with our 2021 Jeep Cherokee. So why do I say that? We'll take a look at some of the features, some of the specs of this bike rack. That way you can make the best decision for you, your different types of bikes, and your Jeep Cherokee. But first off, I would love to say that this is probably going to be the most stylish bike rack that we have here at E-Trailer. So first off, we're going to tilt this bike rack away. We have a lever right over here. You're going to want to pull that lever and tilt this down. Once it's tilted away, you can then access your hatch. So as you can see here on our Cherokee, we have plenty of clearance between our door, our handlebars, and our pedals. Even though I have shorter handlebars, we still had clearance there. And this allows us to get into our trunk, grab whatever we need. So whether it's our helmets, our bags, we can do so. Um, we can get them without having to take the bikes off. That's a big difference between bike racks where you have to take the bike off and then get into your trunk here, quick step, grab what you need, lift back up, and you're ready to hit the road. So this has a 40 pound weight capacity, slightly more than your traditional bike rack. Those usually have 35 pounds weight capacity. So this is gonna be good for most of your bikes. Now your heavy electric bikes, probably not gonna be the best fit. That might need the Kuat NV weight capacity there. But we have a carbon fiber frame bike and notice how it's perfectly fine. If I had a traditional bike rack with a hook that comes down here, I'd be worried about warping or cracking my frame. With this, I don't have to worry about that. Also, if you have women's bikes, children's bikes, step through bikes, bike frames of different shapes, different sizes, that front wheel mount just makes things a lot more simple. Now, if I wanna take the bike off, I start over by the wheel strap. So this is holding down our rear wheel and you're gonna press that lever in order to release the strap. So I lift it up and I try to just like leave it over to the side as much as I can. That way it doesn't get caught up in our spokes. As I hold on to the bike, press this button, push or pull that up, push that out. And from here, I can grab my bike and I'm ready to go on a bike ride. So I'm just gonna leave this bike over to the side so that we can take a closer look at the bike rack itself. Notice it's shiny finish. Notice the way it fits within our Cherokee's rear. In fact, this has three different color options. What I have here is the um, matte black uh, matte black one with the orange accents, but you can also get this in gray as well as pearl. In fact, the pearl would look really nice with our Cherokee's trim right now. Okay, so we took the bike off. We get to take a closer look at the cradles themselves. First is gonna be the rear cradle. Notice how this tilts back and forth to accommodate different wheelbases. I believe the longest wheelbase this can carry is about 47 inches. And then we have a strap that goes around that secures the wheel. Notice how it has grooves on the rear cradle and the front cradle. So those grooves allow for different tire widths. So whether you have teeny tiny tires or your wider fat bike tires, the maximum tire width this can carry is up to three inches. Now this folds down to be nice and compact and neat. We also have our front wheel cradle. I talked about how this helps with a variety of bike frames. We have those grooves there for tire width. This ratchets down and then this secures over to the side. Now, whenever you have any type of accessory on your hitch, there's gonna be some length added to the back of your Cherokee. So let's take some measurements to see exactly how much this Sherpa adds. So I'm gonna measure from our bumper to the end of the bike rack and it sits right before 29 inches. So I'd like to say it's a compact bike rack, not the most compact, but it doesn't add too much space. Whenever you're backing into your garage or trying to park into a teeny tiny spot, it helps if you have a smaller bike rack like this and then don't forget the length of the bikes themselves. Let's also take a measurement for ground clearance. I'm gonna measure at the end of the bike rack right here to the ground, it's about 19 and a half inches of clearance. Compare that to the tray where this bike sit, 19 inches, and compare those measurements over here to the shank, and that's only 10 inches. 
So our ground clearance on our Cherokee isn't that much. Very important. When you go up those steep inclines, like your driveways or hills, your front's going to go up. Your back is going to go down. So it's very important that you have a decent shank rise. That way your bike sit higher up off the ground. This provides a good amount. So it's nice to see that. Now, what if you're planning on not bringing your bikes out just yet, but you also don't want to take your bike rack off? What you can do is fold it up. Remember that lever we pulled earlier to tilt the way? Well, pull that lever again, but this time you're gonna lift up on the rack. And then that's gonna snap into place in the compact or portable position. Let's take some measurements. I'm gonna measure from the bumper to our front wheel mount and it's about one inch away. Good thing is, this is a really sturdy bike rack, so it's not getting any closer than that. Length now added is bumper to the end of the trays, about five inches. Now it does sit further out here by the knob, so that's 12 inches, so one foot away from our vehicle. Big difference compared to when this is folded down. You'll definitely want it in this position when you're just planning on driving around town and you don't want to take up too much space behind you. Also, this is how you can store it inside of your garage. But what is it like living with a bike rack behind you all the time? Notice how our rear window is completely visible. Our taillights are visible as well. Another cool thing is our license plate is mainly visible as is our backup camera. You'll still kind of see your bike rack behind you, but you'll mainly be able to see the cars behind you too, which is great because then you're both legal and visible and safe. Let's talk about how this fits into our hitch now. The version I have has a two inch shank, but the Sherpa has, can come as an inch and a quarter or a two inch shank. Make sure to get the one that matches your hitch receiver. This one fits into our two inch hitch receiver. We have a hitch pin and a lock. That lock is key to like to the cable lock that goes around the bike rack and in around your bikes and into the bike rack. It's a tool free install. So once you pop it into your hitch, you just tighten it down with this knob here and it extends a ball cam, which creates an anti-rattle effect. Let's demonstrate that real quick. So as I shake our bike rack, just to simulate that road movement and road vibration, <laughs> I'm mainly just moving the car at this point. That's because our connection is super secure between the shank and the hitch receiver, making for a smoother ride for the bikes overall. So my personal thoughts about the Kuat Sherpa is it's a solid bike rack. It's a very pretty bike rack. It checks off all the boxes when it comes to premium features from Kuat. If you need a little bit more weight capacity, maybe check out the Rocky Mounts Monorail 2 bike rack. That one has a 60 pound weight capacity, but you don't have the same color options as this. And this is a bit more compact. Again, a great pairing with our Jeep Cherokee. So hopefully this video helped you out with picking the best bike rack for your bikes and your vehicle. Right here, right now, this was a look at the Kuat Sherpa 2.0 two bike platform rack right here on our 2021 Jeep Cherokee. Here on our test course, we'll start by going through the slalom. This is going to show us the side to side action, which simulates turning corners or evasive maneuvers. Once we get to the alternating speed bumps, we'll see the twisting action. This will simulate hitting a curb or a pothole or driving over uneven pavement. Now lastly, we're going over some full speed bumps and we can see here the up and down action and this will just be like driving in and out of a parking lot, garage or driveway. So we can see here how the bike rack moves with our truck.